with those rules in place, Lewis diagrams are absolutely fantastic for being able to describe the way molecules look. It's so simple and elegant, it's beautiful. You just watch. Hydrogen. Well, hydrogen's in group one. So there's two hydrogens here, so there's two valence electrons. So let's account for that when we take a hydrogen and bond it to another hydrogen. Well, there's a line, and that represents a bonding pair that's two electrons. Hey, we're done. Two electrons, two valence electrons. This hydrogen is sharing two electrons. This hydrogen is sharing two electrons. Each hydrogen has two, completes the duet. Everything's great. Now look at fluorine. Fluorine is in group seven. Seven times two is 14. We have to account for 14 valence electrons in the Lewis diagram. So we know that an F has got a bond to an F. That's two electrons. Now, what do we do? We distribute the rest of the electrons as lone pairs. Here are two electrons in the top here, and two here, and two here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. That's all fourteen of F2's valence electrons accounted for. But look, this fluorine has two, four, six, eight around it. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight around it. It's beautiful. It works. Now that tells you that fluorine has a single bond in between two Fs, and it does. Water. Water. Oxygen's in group six. Two hydrogens in group one. Six plus two plus two uh, plus one plus one. <laughs> Sorry. That's going to be a total of eight valence electrons. So the eight valence electrons have to be accounted for. Take an oxygen. Attach it to a hydrogen. Attach it to a hydrogen. That's two, four, six, eight. We put them around the oxygen because we know that the hydrogen's already completed their duet. Two, four, six, eight around the oxygen, its octet is complete. Two for the hydrogen, two for the hydrogen, two, four, six, eight, which is the total there that we need for valence electrons. Then they get a little trickier. How about CO2? Well, CO2, group six times two, that's 12. Group four, plus that 12, there's a total of 16 valence electrons that we have to account for here in the molecule. So, it looks like carbon's probably in the middle and oxygen's around it. We try to make it as symmetrical as possible. So, we'll put an O here and an O here. What do we got? Two, four. Let's distribute. Six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Oh, we're done. Oh, that's good. No, that's not good. Look. Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. That's around each of the oxygens, but the carbon only has two for its sharing, it has to complete its octet. So when you run into that kind of a, you know, that kind of trouble, look what happens. We need to make this lone pair be shared as a bonding pair. And so we take it from here and we put it here. We take it from here, we put it here. Oh, this is so beautiful. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. You know we can even do polyatomic ions with this kind of a model. So, what are we looking at here? Four, group four, group five, so that's nine. Hey, nine, that's an uneven number, you can't do that, that's right. So that's why this whole molecule here carries a negative one charge to become an ion, so we add an electron to give a negative one charge, get it? So four plus five is nine, plus one is ten, because it sucks in an electron to get 10 as its total number of valence electrons. C bonds to N. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Oh no, no, that's just, that's just messy. We can't do that. So how are we going to be able to fix that? Hey, guess what? We take this, put it here. 2, 4, 6. 2, 4, 6, 8. That, that's good, but that, oh, maybe take the, put, <gasps> Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, shared by the carbon. Two, four, six, eight, by the nitrogen. Is there a triple bond in the cyanide ion? Yes, there is. 